Hello and welcome to the first ever Guru Gab. We're here on Guru Grit. I'm going to answer questions that have been submitted to me where I will answer them on this platform because I don't have enough time to do so on others and I believe going into details would be much more beneficial for anyone who ever came across it. So here goes. Yesterday I received a very lengthy email from somebody who's going through a very difficult situation in the topic of a custody battle and there was a lot of details in their letter and a lot of heavy themes. The first thing I would like to mention, when you're dealing with something that inherently feels that it is out of your control and that you are powerless, you sometimes feel as though you're completely helpless and this causes you to react very strongly. This is the first key to this answer. That is to understand that no matter how something looks like on the outside, you have ultimate control and power over yourself. You can compose yourself and you have control over circumstances by virtue of having control of your own energy and namely emotions. So speaking of, I think that's a good omen that that baby just cried, but having control of yourself. So even if something outside of you seemingly appears hopeless, you don't have to perceive it that way. You don't have to perceive it as something being taken from you. And so much of the time in separation from another person, the theme really is control to see whether the person is aware that they're doing it or not. You know, um, whether you're moving out and they take your things or break your things or contact you one too many times or not enough times. The things that people seem to do to one another is really just a game to see what kind of reaction they can get from you. So don't allow that. Stay in your alignment and stay in your energy. I really mean when I say that reality is just not your friend. And though it could sound like it's tipping on the point of delusion, believe me, living in your own mind sometimes is just the only way to go and the only way to survive the madness of this world. So if you have to exist and daydream in your own mind, then that's just the way it's going to be. So let's start there. Now, in terms of methods and things of that nature, I would, I would default to Neville Goddard, who believes in living from the end. So living as though it's already done. It's already done. Those children are in your custody. Everything is resolved. So there's actually no point whatsoever in thinking, worrying, or discussing about who has what lawyer, how many resources or connections, time and space proximity, cities, none of that is relevant because it's done. It's done. The children are in your possession. You're having a nice time with them. You're riding the bus. You're going to the beach. You're going to the park. Live from the end. And when you do that, you comfort yourself and you feel nice. It's better to think those thoughts than to think thoughts that your children are not by your side. Now, another thing that could help, and this one might be a bit much for sensitive people, and I know that my friends personally don't like when I do this, but this is how I cope with something very stressful. Life goes on. In fact, it has to. So what I do when I'm in a bit of a sticky situation is I imagine what, what would it be like if the worst case scenario already happened? Okay, I, you fail the driving test, you drop out of school, you get fired from your job, you get left at the altar, whatever. Now what? Now what? You still have to have lunch? <laughs> Pick something you want to wear, someplace you want to eat. Life goes on. You try to imagine ways you would be happy even if that thing happened. And you climb your way up. You try to think of ways you would be happy. You just go up, 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 up. And then you go, okay, you know, it'll be okay. Everything is fine. Now I'm going to use the children as a very good example in this. As a mother, your children are yours more so emotionally and energetically than they will ever be physically. I'll say that again. Your children are so much yours that they're more yours in ways that you cannot physically perceive than they are in the ways that you can physically perceive. This is why children need their parents more when they're grown than when they're young. Now you might think, oh, I moved out when I'm 18, da da da. I know, but listen, when you're young, your children physically depend on you. But when they start becoming adults and going through life, they need your guidance more. 
They need your morality more, your values, your legacy. So this is where the energy comes into it. Your children, all this stuff, if you were to not see them for a while, you still have so much dominion over them from where you are now with your mood and with your thoughts. So if you're feeling unstable, you know, mothers can feel everything, but it goes both ways. Children also know. This is why children are affected by the absence of their parents as well as the presence of their parents. Have you ever thought of that? So even when you're not together, do your best to feel emotionally stable because children naturally gravitate towards emotionally stable adults that are consistent and predictable. So even if you're not seeing them, don't lose your equilibrium. And even when you don't see them, your, your equilibrium energetically still influences them and holds a dominance of influence over them and their happiness. This is one reason why children cannot forget their parents, even if they never meet them. They always somehow wonder, they have like a calling in their heart. So don't feel that fear. But if you must, feel the fear and transcend it anyways. Don't block it, don't resist, just say, you know, it would really suck if that happened, but I'll be fine and they'll be fine because I know they will love me no matter what. They will want to see me again one day, just as I will always want to see them. So once you stop pushing against it, it subsides. Like they say, what you resist persists. So if you, if you fall back, it stops pushing you, you stop pushing it. You can't fight fire with fire. You know, and, and the way to disengage something very powerful is to just disarm, just leave it. Unplug yourself from that. So this is what I mean. Unplug yourself from the circumstances. I really don't care you know, how powerful someone is seemingly. Your personal power can crush everything. Abraham Hicks has a wonderful quote. They constantly say, one person who is in alignment is more powerful than millions who are not. Millions. It doesn't matter if they have tanks. It doesn't matter if they have coaches, if they have teachers, if they have all the money in the world. One person who walks in their true power, who loves themselves, who's calm, who's controlled, is more powerful than any earthly resource. You know, like scripture says, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. So don't worry about the facts. If the facts are not your friend, don't make friends with those facts. Only make friends with the facts inside you that you say, I'm the best thing for these children. They know it. They want me as much as I want them. Everything is always working out for me. Everything is working for my greater good. I will make peace with the outcome. So that's the important thing is to get your energy into alignment. Now let's do a method. Neville Goddard says living in the end. So one thing that you can try doing, especially since you're pressed for time or if you're pressed for time, before you go to sleep, when you're in a you know, dreamy state, close your eyes, take a few breaths and calm down and just envision everything working out. So maybe you're outside the courtroom, maybe you're getting an email, maybe you're getting a phone call from your lawyer or your former partner or someone telling you, hey, it's great, they're coming home to you. Everything worked out. Maybe in your vision you're celebrating Christmas together, you're going skiing or you're making a snowman, you're baking cookies and fall asleep in that state that it's done. That's very important. If you can get, but you have to feel it as well. Don't just think it, really feel that it's okay. Get your emotions on board with your thoughts. Because if you do it and you're like, okay, yes, it's positive, positive, but then you're still fearful, it's a mismatch. You have to match up the thoughts with the feelings and then you, you get it. In the end, it really can't go wrong because your children will always yearn for you like I explained. But in any case, just try the method. Try to see if a friend will do it with you or, you know, uh, a parent or something. Somebody who will, when they go to bed, also envision it for you. I, I can do it for you tonight. I intend to. I will envision it as already done. Another thing that could make you feel better, because it's honestly made me feel better a bunch of times, is to relive experiences that have already passed. So get into a comfortable place. Take a few breaths. Maybe meditate. Maybe just calm down until you're totally, like, empty and say you opened an email and it said something there that you did not like regarding this legal issue. Maybe it was from a lawyer, maybe it was from them, doesn't matter. Maybe it was an envelope, maybe it was a text, maybe it was a phone call. And it made you 
feel furious, made you feel powerless, made you feel out of control, fearful. What you're going to do is relive that experience, but you get the news that you want. So you open the computer, you read the email, and it's gonna say, Dear Susan, okay? The judge has decided that this evidence against you is not valid, it's thrown out. The judge has decided there's no need to go to court. Uh, this person's lawyer quit on them and they gave up the fight. The kids are coming back to you, whatever the case may be. Relive the event as though you get the news that you want and then you smile, you close the laptop, you're like, oh, okay, what am I gonna have for dinner? Should I have soup, should I have salad, maybe I'll just have ice cream, mm, go watch some TV, and you just forget about it and fall asleep. Just forget about it, fall asleep or meditate or just take a few breaths or a few minutes, completely empty yourself out and go about your day. The point is to try to deactivate the negative emotion. This is very crucial and this works for absolutely anything in the world. When you go shopping for shoes, you don't look at the shoes that you want, summer sandals, and go to each pair on every shelf and tell them how much you hate your winter boots. Like energy doesn't care what you're trying to get rid of because it's always attracting. So you're always attracting what you're thinking about and talking about. So if you're trying to bring in something new, like a positive outcome, only think and dream and live from that positive outcome. Ignore what has happened. I understand we have to live in the real world and we have to answer our phones and pay our bills and all of that, but it's not the point. It's to do it from an energy where you don't feel like a victim, to do it from an energy where you feel like it's done, it's in your favor. You know, you're the queen of your domain. You can have anything and everything. And truly you are, you're the ruler of your own life. You make it happen for you. You're the author of your own script. So scripted, you know, literally, if you have to speak in the mirror and say, I'm so glad everything worked out, ta da 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 da, then do that. So I hope this helps. This can work for absolutely anyone. Live from the end, speak as though it's already done, consider the methods, and remember that your energy dominates even if you don't see or hear people in your reality. This is how we're able to attract and repel potential suitors, prospects, lovers. Sometimes people wonder, how come after two years this person's so in love with me? It's like because it took you two years to realize that having self-love was much more important than this person's love and they are attracted to that. So even though they didn't see you, they didn't follow your social media for whatever amount of months, it clicked and your energy just matched up. You know, it happens when you find money on the ground. It happens when you get a job offer. You're not in the office with the hiring committee. You know, you're not with the person who dropped that $20. But when you get right with yourself, when you feel calm and stable with yourself, and you truly feel at peace with yourself, everything that you want is now visible. It was always there, but now you can actually see it and it just comes into your life. So your energy is always working. It works even when you sleep. So please just consider these simple techniques and I hope that you find the peace that you need to live the life that you want. And as always, I really hope this helps and I wish you the best. Bye-bye.